Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is the 3rd of July and yesterday I finished the audiobook for One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Um, it's the first audiobook I have read this year. I think I said it in a previous video somewhere. Um, I cancelled my audiobook subscription last year because I only ever listened to reading to reading books, to audiobooks on my commute. And when I stopped having a commute because I was working from home, I didn't need audiobooks. So I've not read one this year at all. Um, but I'm now back working at a school that's further away from home so I now have like a 30 minute commute e each way so I restarted my scribed scribed somebody tell me how to say that um subscription and my first pick was one last stop um I started it in June and it seems like a really good time to be reading it because it is super queer uh we're following a girl called August who well a woman called August she's 20 something I think 22 23 so a woman called August who moves um to New York City and one day she gets on the subway and she meets a woman called Jane and it goes from there and I'm not really going to say much more about the plot I think a lot of people already know what's happening but I don't want to be the one to spoil it for you it's such a lovely book it's uh Casey McQu McQuiston also wrote Red White and Royal Blue which I read in 2019 I think um and I enjoyed it it's kind of it's a very Marmite book people either love it or hate it but I thought it was fun it wasn't my it's not my usual kind of thing which I think is why I probably enjoyed it more than other people have because I just kind of didn't look too deeply at it and just went along for the ride um this one is her second book and like I said I really really enjoyed it it's very much about love it's about finding yourself it's about found family it's about biological family um there is so much rep in it so we've got a bisexual main character we've got a lesbian main character we have got a trans um side character we've got there's basically i think there's one um cis um heterosexual he cis heterosexual character in it which is fantastic because there's just like i said there's so much rep going on all the characters are fantastic i am sad that i finished the book because i want to spend more time with them i think it would make an amazing like netflix series like one of those netflix series that would run for years and like be real comfort watch for people um yeah i just thought it was really fun i think it did have some pacing issues and you definitely have to suspend your disbelief for some of the things that happen but yeah just for a kind of um a fun cute happy easy read i really enjoyed it gave it four stars would recommend it's the 5th of July and last night I finally finished Daughters of Night by uh, Laura Shepherd Robinson. This gorgeous finished copy, look how big it is, um, was very kindly sent to me by a book break months ago and I finally got around to reading it. I did start it in June, it was on my June TBR if you saw that video, and I did start it in June but I didn't finish it till yesterday because it's pretty beefy, although the text is also quite big um but i thoroughly enjoyed it so this is historical fiction we are in london in 80, uh, 1782 so georgian london um and a woman is found stabbed to death at a very high society london party um and we're following caroline who is the wife of the main character in blood and sugar which was this author's first book and this isn't a sequel but it's a companion novel um and anyway caroline wants to find out what's going on and at first the authorities are really quick to respond and then when they realize that the dead, the dead woman was a sex worker they drop the case and it's allowed to go cold and caroline is completely incensed by this so she um she what's the word i'm looking for she gets a well they're called thief takers um but it's basically a detective she hires him to look into the case and the two of them kind of start looking into what was going on and how this woman ended up dead at this party and that's all i can really say it really delves into like the dark depths of georgian london um and like i said i really did enjoy it it did have a couple of issues it had some pacing issues because there were scenes where caroline or um the man that she's hired had found something out and then that, so we'd already see them discover it and then there'd be a conversation where the two of them were sharing their information and then we'd hear it all over again so it, it was a little bit like can we get on with it please um, and I think it probably could have been a good 150 pages shorter than it is but like I said a couple of times now can you tell I'm tired after a day of teaching um, I did enjoy it I would definitely read Blood and Sugar um, you don't need to have read that to read this to read this because I haven't read the first one but I would really like to and I will definitely look for more from this author so thank you very much book break I had a brilliant time it's the 9th of July and I'm at the end of another very very busy school week it's Friday evening well afternoon and I'm done for the week and wow I should probably have looked in the mirror before I turned the camera on you can see where I've been rubbing my eyes my hair is a mess 
future life. So yeah, also I don't usually wear, this is quite a fancy like full length pink dress and I don't usually wear A, bright colours or B, anything this fancy for work. Um, but we were wearing pink today for cancer research and raising money with a school like the kids were in Mufti and stuff. So it's been quite a fun day and I've had so many kids be like, oh, you look nice, like, you look nice at Miss. Really surprised because usually I look like a potato. So that's that. But I just wanted to come on quickly because yesterday this arrived, which is a different kind of happy by Rachel Hambleton, who is probably better known as the part-time working mummy. Um, I have followed her on Instagram for years. Um, probably, probably five or six years. Um, and she's just fab. And this is her first fiction book. So I pre-ordered it ages ago when it was announced and it popped through yesterday. Um, and basically Rachel um, has six kids her and her husband have yeah they have six kids between them so she had three girls he had two boys and then they've had Willby who is their son together um and she posts all like their entire life is posted on Instagram she's really really honest and upfront and absolutely hilarious and I love following her and seeing what they're all up to and she wrote um a non-fiction book last year or the year before I think it was the year before um which I read and really enjoyed and this is her first fiction work Although by the sound of it, it's like very much like a fictionalised version of their life because I'll read you the blurb. But as soon as she announced it, I was like, I'm definitely supporting her. So I ordered it and I love this cover. It's so bright. And then look at, look at that for a naked heartback. Okay, let me just quickly read you the blurb. Jo said goodbye to peace and quiet when she got pregnant at 19. But now she has a chance to hit refresh. A partner she loves, five amazing kids and a house by the sea. But life is never simple and there is more than a little emotional baggage coming along for the ride. Starting with that, of the of an ex-husband who doesn't pull his weight. I don't swear on this channel, so I'm going to have to like slightly bleep this out. Then there's the untrained puppy, the work-life balance, a custody battle for the children, and all the every everyday ups and downs and chaos of being a patchwork family. Surrounded by family dramas and mums who seem to have all their life together, Jo must find a way to make friends and make it work in this new town. Barbecues, beach picnics and dog walks open up new conversations, but as Jo gets to know everyone better, the picture-perfect families might be in need of more help than she first thought. When normal is not an option, surprises can lead to a different kind of happy family. I think this just sounds great. Like I said, I think it's going to be very much a fictionalised version of Rachel's life. I'm still up for that. And yeah, I'm going to save this for like August. I think this will be like a nice summary read. Or if I, you know, get into a point where I'm just having a bit of rubbish time, I feel like this would really cheer me up. It's the 13th of July. And yesterday, this little channel, my corner of the internet, my like little creative project baby reached 2,000 subscribers there are 2,000 of you guys in my corner of the internet as of this morning there's 2005 which is wild like I cannot believe that we've reached that milestone like it just blows my mind I didn't film yesterday um because I picked up a sickness bug from work, which is one of the joys of working with children. Um, so I had to come home and I felt rough. Like I felt rank yesterday. I feel much better today. Uh, but I was not in the mood to turn the camera on yesterday. So I happened to see it while I was late, feeling very sorry for myself. And it cheered me right up. So thank you so much, all of you that are here. By the time you guys see this video, my Q&A um, announcement and giveaway will be up the giveaway part i'll have closed but if you want to add another question in i will link the video below um where you can do that uh yeah because obviously i want to say a massive thank you thank you to each and every one of you who are here uh, whether you were here from the beginning or whether you're number 2005 2005 people that's mildly terrifying but yeah thank you so 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 much but yeah, I will leave my um, announcement video and stuff in the description where I'll probably, I'm going to film that after I film this clip. So I'll probably be more like gushing there. So yes, thank you so much. I also finished two books over the weekend. So the first book that I finished was Bad Habits by Flynn Meany. Uh, I've probably already mentioned it somewhere in this vlog, but Charlotte from Books and Bargains is controlling my TBR this month. And if I haven't already, I will link that TBR video in the description as well. Um, and this is a book that she sent me a few months ago. And she said in her gift note, she said, so I'm only, okay, so I'm only 20% into this book, but so far it's extremely sex positive and I've laughed out loud more than once. So thought you needed it in your life. And yes, she was right. So we are following, is it Alex? Yes, Alex, who, as you can see from the cover, uh, she has got a faux hawk. She wears vegan leather boots. She is all about um, being 
loud and uh, rebellious and standing up for people and uh, she's very sex positive and she happens to go to a very traditional catholic girls boarding school so those two things don't really mesh um, and she decides it's time to get kicked out for good and so she decides that she's going to put on a version of the vagina mon monologues in this very catholic boarding school um, and it's about what happens and it's kind of her adventures along the way i really enjoyed this overall i think there were some flaws in it the first thing i would say is there are so many harry potter references in this book and this book was published this year so there's absolutely no need for it and that i found really frustrating i think charlotte in her review um, referred to them as stones in her shoe and i would agree with that um there are quite a few sprinkled throughout the book so just be aware of that before you pick it up um i found it incredibly annoying because firstly this was published in 2021 is there any need um and also as we know harry potter is not a personality trait and it was kind of used in quite a lazy way it felt like lazy writing which always irritates me no matter which like fandom or book or whatever an author is referring to it just feels like a shortcut or just lazy writing i found that kind of annoying i also struggled with the pace a little bit i think it could have been at least 50 pages shorter um and i also felt like the story arc was really predictable but on that point i would say i'm probably not the i'm definitely not the audience for this this is for like teenagers um and i'm gonna put it on my shelf in my classroom next year for the kids to borrow um, because it does have some fantastic messages about being yourself, about standing up for other people, about finding who you are. So overall, I gave it four stars. I was on a three and a half and then I really loved the way the ending went. So I gave it four stars in the end. But yeah, this was fun. It did have some issues, but overall, I enjoyed it. And then I also finished The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce, which I was body reading with Jean and um, Leanne. And this was really kind of gifted to me by Joe a couple of months ago now. I mean, look, I mean, it's a glorious looking book. Um, this is a thriller, sort of, I guess that's what you'd put it, um, about a woman who um, goes to the Swiss Alps to celebrate her brother's engagement and they're staying in this gorgeous hotel which has been renovated and it used to be a sanatorium for people with tuberculosis and she is a cop or a detective but she has been put on paid leave because of something that happened um, and then a woman goes missing and it says on the front you won't want to leave until you can't and i don't want to give any more spoilers like i don't want to give spoilers so i won't say any more than that about the plot this i gave three stars i think it was fine it was solid kind of thriller there are a couple of jump scares however i think if you're someone who reads a lot of thrillers you will see where it's coming like where it's going a mile away um i wasn't shocked by any of the twists and we do have that trope of a police detective who probably has PTSD and has some kind of trauma that they're dealing with and they're a bit rubbish in their relationship, just happens to be a female detective this time. So yeah, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it either. Gave it a solid three stars. It's still 13th of July and as you can probably tell by the top knot and slightly frazzled exp expression, it's the evening um, and I've had this arrive. It might be my Grady Hendrix pre-order or it might be something for one of you lovely lot. So let's let's find out together. Um, wow, this my hair really does look ridiculous when I do it like that. It's being chopped off in August and I can't wait. Okay, let's see what this is. Is that a gift note? No, that's a receipt. Oh, that might be a gift note though. <laughs> it's from Chloe, whatever it is. So congratulations on 2K subs, Victoria. That's all in capital letters. I love it. You deserve it so, so much. And I cannot express how much of a gem you are to the book community. And then the like clinking glasses emoji from Chloe. Chloe, that's so cute. Okay, let's see what this is. I thought she might be sending me something because she texted me yesterday and was like, just theoretically, if something is on your book, you're on your wish list as a hardback. Oh, the cat's just coming. As a hardback, do you definitely want it as a hardback or would paperback be acceptable? And I was like... Paperbacks are all good. I think there's only two on there that I really want to hardback, which is Evelyn Hugo and Psychology of Time Travel, because I already own those in paperback. So let's see what she sent me. What are you? Oh, which is steeped in gold. Nice choice by Tianan Smart. I really hope I've said that right. I will find out how to say it before I review it. This is very exciting. Look how glorious this cover is. This has been on my wish list for ages, and I'm very excited to get to it. Um I don't know much about it. Let's just read a little bit at the back. Sworn enemies, the two witches enter a deadly alliance to take down the woman who threatens both their worlds, but revenge is a bloody pursuit and nothing is certain except, except the lengths Uriah and Jasmine will go to to win this game. 
I am excited. A fierce and thrilling story where dangerous magic reigns supreme and betrayal lurks beneath every word. And then, because it's a hockey one, this is what's, what's in it. Trust no witch. I mean, order divides them, revenge will unite them. I am really, really excited for this. And thank you so much, Chloe. That was really sweet of you. It's the 14th of July and this has been sat on my desk all day and I've been ignoring it like a good girl whilst I work. I've now finally finished for the day, so we're going to open it. I am pretty sure it's the new Grady Hendrix and I am really excited. So let's open it together. I don't often pre-order books, but with Grady Hendrix, I, as soon as I saw it announced on Twitter, man, I suck at this today. As soon as I saw it on Twitter, I was like, yes, pre-order. Pre-order for sure. Because I will read anything that man writes pretty much. Yeah, I can already see it. Oh, here it is, the final girls support group. I am in, I'm obsessed with this cover. How creepy is this? Oh man, I'm so excited for this. Okay, so let's just have a little look at the naked hardback together as well. Ooh. Okay, so it's black, but you've got this foil chair. And then look at the spine. Okay, I am going to start reading this. Is that deckled edges? No. Ooh, there's like, it looks like there might be illustrations or something in it. I am very, very excited for this. I am going to start reading this pretty much immediately. Let's just put this coat back on. So you'll probably see a review for it very shortly. It's the 15th of July and I have just finished A Beginner's Guide to Being Mental by Natasha Devon, um, illustrated by Ruby, etc. And I was really glad when Charlotte put this on my TBR because it's the oldest book on my TBR. It's the one I've had on there the longest. And I'll have to be honest, I've been avoiding it. And that was stupid. Um, Natasha Devon did a lecture um, at my university or online um, last year to talk about how teachers can help support teenagers with their mental health and also how we as teachers um, can can kind of care for our mental health and how to be in the profession and kind of be mindful of ourselves and the people around us. And she was so fantastic in that lecture. She was so clearly intelligent and funny, passionate about what she's talking about. She speaks from experience and I just really loved her. So before the end of that lecture had even finished, I'd ordered this book. Um, and then it's just sat on my shelf and I think it's a couple of reasons why I've been avoiding it. Uh, my mental health has been shaky, like everybody else, over the last 18 months. And I wasn't sure that I wanted to read something that was directly about mental health. Um, and also that word mental. And she talks about it in the book, about how it's a word that's been reclaimed. Um, I grew up in the 90s and I was a teenager in the noughties. And that word mental was thrown around as a really derogatory term. And... So I think that's possibly what was making me hesitate picking this book up. Um, I shouldn't have done because I gave it five stars. I absolutely loved it. I found it completely fascinating. It's really good. Like it says beginner's guide. And obviously I'm not a beginner when it comes to mental health or self-care or anything like that. Um, but this is one of those books that I will like be pushing on everyone I know, especially, not especially, but definitely the teachers that I know, the people who work with young people. Um, because it just breaks it all down into two really manageable chunks. It covers so many topics. Um, I think if you're in a vulnerable position at the moment, maybe be careful picking this up, but you could easily skip a chapter if there's one that you find um, particularly difficult. Um, but she's got this fab style. She's got this kind of slightly sarcastic, funny. There's quite a few sides. It's, it's a bit like Adam Kay, this is going to hurt, but for your brain. And yeah, I found it really fascinating. I learned loads, particularly um, in chapter B for brain, uh, where she talks about how the brain works and how an anxious brain works and how it's different. And I just thought it was wonderful. So five stars, highly, highly recommend this book. And I wish I hadn't left it so long, but there we go. And then we were just having dinner and this arrived and it is heavy. It's really heavy. And I don't think I've ordered anything, so let's have a look together. Ooh, oh, is that a gift note? Try not to look. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's from Charlotte. She's so cute. She said, congratulations hitting 2K. You bloody smashed it. I hope you enjoy this as much as I have. It's basically book nerd porn. Charlotte from Books and Bargains. What have you said? This is not from my wish list then, clearly. What is this? <gasps> Bookshop Tours of Britain. God, this thing is heavy. This is weighty. Oh my God, look how gorgeous this is. 
Oh my goodness. What even is this? To travel by bookshop is to see the best of Britain. From the southwest coast of England, across the mountain of Wales, through England's historical heartland and lakes, the Scottish Highlands and Norfolk Broads, to the Rolling Downs of Sussex and Hardy's Wessex. On their way, the bookshop tours take in beaches and castles, head down coal mines, go bird watching, hiking and canoeing. Visit whiskey distilleries, stately homes and houses of some of Britain's best loved historical writers. And last but not least, a host of fantastic bookshops. Oh my god, shot. This is, st I, I need this as a print. This is stunning. This guidebook is a slow guide to travel, slow travel guide to Britain, navigating from bookshop to bookshop, across 18 routes and travelling via backwater roads. The tours take in picturesque villages, towns and villages, stunning beauty spots, golden sand beaches and breathtaking coastlines, as well as places rich with, with indus industrial, literary and historical heritage. Oh my God, like, this is so exciting. Oh my God, this is so exciting. Thank you very much, Charlotte. You've made my day. It's the 17th of July and wow, this is a really flattering angle, but it's 30 degrees outside and I'm basically hiding from the heat. Um, we had my in-laws around today for the first time since the start of the pandemic for lunch. I cooked a roast lunch for the three of us and then my parents-in-law and my brother-in-law because my brother-in-law's birthday that we were celebrating. So I have literally cooked a roast in 30 degree heat today. Um, it was fantastic to have everybody around again. It's the first time we've been able to do it. Like, all the windows open. Everybody's double jabbed except for Charlie and I. Um, so we did it as safely as possible. But it was just, it was really emotional having everyone sat around the table. Because it's the first time since Christmas 2019 that we've been able to do that. Um, but yeah, I'm basically hiding from the heat. So we've got this very, like, look at this lovely background. You guys are so lucky. Um, and I look like Trunchbull. But whatever. I've just finished the final girl support group by Grady Hendrix and I'm just gonna kind of leave this here maybe let's do that this is the kind of chaotic there we go chaotic vibes we're going for uh because I showed you this book in a previous clip this arrived a couple of days ago I got it the day after release day um giving it three out of five stars I think it's more like a three and a half or 3.75 like nearly a four star but I don't do part stars and if I'm in between stars in my opinion then I will go down because I'm just that person um I loved I'm gonna swap swap hands swap hands oh, I absolutely loved the first 150 pages like I literally could not put them down I read it in one sitting the first 150 pages and I was like this is amazing I love it it's got Hendrix's kind of comedic dark style to it loving life and then the second half happened and I just got a bit bored and I really struggled because we're following one particular final girl, but she's in a group of six final girls. And I felt like there was nowhere near enough character development to be able to tell them apart. And we don't even really get, we get, we get like sketchy outlines of what happened to the other final girls, but we don't get their full backstory. And I feel like if we'd had what happened to them, sorry, this background noise, because I've got every single window in my house is wide open. I don't care because it's too hard to care. Um, I feel like if we'd had their backstories properly, I would have cared a lot more about the events that unfold in the book, but we didn't. Oh, you've got laundry. Yeah, this is this is great framing. Um, I just couldn't connect because they were all kind of felt very similar to each other. And the pace slowed right down. And I didn't love the end. So I'm a bit disappointed. I would still recommend it. I would always recommend Grady Hendrix, but this is just nowhere near as good as My Best Friend's Exorcism, which is my favourite one of his. I think my ranking for his, like, for... I know he's got other books that he wrote that are, like, horror... It's a horror series or something, but I've got no interest in reading that. But, like, his four most famous ones, I would probably have... My Best Friend's Exorcism is my favourite because the female friendship in that is incredible. Although it did put me off eating ice cream for about six months afterwards. So just be aware of that because it is the body horror in that is. Oh. Um, Best Friends Exorcism, then probably Horror Store, then Southern Book Club, and then this one, I think. So yeah, it didn't quite work for me. But I would still recommend it. I still enjoyed it. It was still good. It just wasn't quite like Grady Hendrix level. It's the 18th of July and I have entirely melted. It's 32 degrees outside and it feels like it's about 50 degrees in here. <laughs> and you probably think I now live in my office. Um, it's Sunday. 
I'm refusing to shut any windows or the door. You should shut the door when I film, so you might be able to hear the boys in the background. I literally don't care. I'm too hot. Like, oh. I'm not made for this weather. Well, not without a pool or central heat. Um, not central heating. Not central heating. Aircon. I am not built for this. But anyway, I have finished two books today. So the first book that I finished was Circus of Wonders by Elizabeth McNeil. This was very, very kindly gifted to me by the wonderful Ether from Words of Clover last month. And I was really pleased when Charlotte put this on my TBR because it literally just come in um, when she chose my books. So I thought she might pick stuff that was older, but she treated me to this and I really enjoyed it. So we are in Victorian London. Uh, well, in Victorian England to start with, and a girl named Nell, she's about 19, is sold by her father into the circus because she has, I don't know if you can see on the cover, she has these markings on her skin um, that the villagers think are unlucky, but the circus master says that he can make Nell famous and make her loads of money and etc, etc. So her father sells her to the circus and it's about what happens to her. And it took me a little while to get into it. It's not perfect, I gave it four stars. Um, some of the pacing was a bit off, but I really enjoyed it. I've not read an Elizabeth McNeil before. She also wrote The Doll Factory, which I haven't read yet. Um, but I would definitely pick that up as soon as I can because I really, really liked her writing. And this was just a really interesting look at found family, at body differences, at disability, um, at the world of the circus and the, the so-called kind of freak show at the time. It's also about brothers. We get multiple perspectives in this. I just thought it was really wonderful and I gave it four stars. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Aoife, thank you so much for sending it to me. It was a real treat. And then the second book, which I finished and I uh, started and finished today, I told you, my brain has melted. It's Hot Stuff of Volume 2 by Alice Oseman. This was sent to me by the wonderful Shannon from 155 Books ages ago. What's the date on this one? Yeah, 29th of May, mm, I guess less than two months, not too bad. Uh, but yeah, she sent this to me back in May and I read the first one, I think that was in May as well. And then I've been meaning to pick up the second one and Charlotte gave me the push to do it and I'm so glad I did. Gave it five stars, I loved it. Do I need to explain what Heartstopper is? We've got Nick and Charlie, they meet at school in the first book, set in the UK. Uh, Charlie is gay, Nick thinks he's straight and they form a friendship and then they fall in love and I just thought this was wonderful. I love the way um, Nick's sexuality is handled because he's questioning and trying to figure it out and they've got to kind of work out their different friend groups and I just thought the whole thing was wonderful. It was a really enjoyable, it took me less than an hour to read but it was just such a lovely hour. You can probably hear the boys wrestling in the background. We'll ignore that. Um, yeah, I just had an absolutely wonderful time and I can't wait to read the next two volumes. It's the 19th of July and I'm possibly the hottest I have ever been. My car is registering 33 degrees, but I'm just on the drive home. I've pulled over uh, because I have finished my next audiobook. So I've just finished listening to or reading um, Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Centano. And hopefully I've said that correctly. Um, it's been a, a book that's been kind of floating around on my to read list for a while. And then Amy, Amy Myers said that she was really enjoying the audiobook. So when it's time for me to pick up a new audiobook, I thought I'll give it a try. So we are following a girl or a woman, because she's a woman, she's in her late 20s, called Medi, who um, is the photographer for her family's wedding business. Her family are Chinese Indonesian and they set her up on a date. Her aunt, her, her mum and her aunties set her up on this date which she goes on reluctantly and the guy ends up dead and it kind of goes from there and it's it's sort of a contemporary romance with like darker bits well slightly darker bits there's a slightly darker storyline thrown in there were several times I actually laughed out loud in my car so I really enjoyed it I gave it four stars I think it was only because the pacing was a bit slow and the miscommunication trope is used so much um and the ending was just a bit too neat and tiny for me but i would say if you're looking for an easy interesting learn loads about um chinese indonesian weddings and the culture um, and all that kind of stuff found that interesting and it was a nice twist and turns to the main storyline um yeah so if you're looking for kind of an easy fun genuinely laugh out loud funny read i would highly recommend dial a for aunties it's the 20th of july and i've had quite the time since i filmed my previous clip from yesterday. So I sat at home last night and my phone pings and it's the NHS Track and Trace app telling me that I need to self isolate for seven days because I've been in contact with someone who has COVID. Um, and basically all hell broke loose from that point because obviously I had to tell my boss at work. It means that I can't go back to school before the end of term. It means that I won't get to say goodbye to 
my classes it means that i won't get to welcome in help welcome in the new year sevens it means i can't finish setting up my classroom for the, for september <sighs> it's just been a really rubbish time and i had a couple of people when i told them were like oh woohoo you can start your summer early and yeah i guess i can but this is not how i want to start it and i really wanted to finish the school year properly and finish it with my team at work and yeah just feel a bit meh um today i've spent the day kind of sorting out a few things i needed doing and i've got a, like a list of little list of things to do this week um to kind of finish off but i can't really settle today it's still really hot i've got all the windows open so there'll definitely be background noise I can't really settle so I'm just I've done a few things this morning and now I'm going to curl up in my office which is still the coolest place in the house and read so there might be another clip shortly after this one um but I wanted to show you two things first of all this came yesterday as well um and it's a book journal and some lovely person I can't remember who it was but thank you to whoever it was that suggested this on my June yes my June um reading month video where I was talking about having a classroom a library why can't i speak a classroom library um they said oh you should get a book tracker or like get the kids to do a post-it note review every time they read a book so you can keep track of it and i was like that's a really good idea so i was having a little look online i found this on amazon and i think this was like two pounds um and it's basically just it's just a reading log um and there's various things that you can do it's got space for 100 books in it but what i really like is that when the kids have finished reading they can fill this in and it's really good because the kids that are lower achieving can you know at least tick if it's paperback or hardback obviously it won't be ebook or audiobook um they can write the dates they can write the author name and the title and they can give it a five star rating and they might be able to write it like a line or two and then the kids who are higher achieving can fill this whole thing out and we'll just have this really cool record and i will get them to write their own name in here as well so i know who's who and yeah for like two quid which i'm pretty sure it was I just thought this was a really nice thing. Um, it will get trashed because <laughs> that's what kids do. So it won't remain pristine. Um, but yeah, I just want to have this for my little classroom library next year. So that was exciting. And then today, I've just literally just now, my husband shouted up and he was like, you've got a delivery. Um, and this box has arrived. I obviously don't want to show you the top because it's got my dress on. And I have no idea what this is at all so let's open this together there is an arc that i got approved for last week so maybe it's a press pack for that but i really don't know Ooh, just opened oh can i do this without showing it says that on the on the flap what is this i'm so what is Okay. Oh, so this has arrived. Sugar Finery London. I don't know. Is there a is there in here? No. Okay. I don't know what this is, guys. Is it sweets or skincare or what? And who is it from? Okay. Ooh, it says purveyors of confectionery on the side. So I think this is going to be fancy. <gasps> oh. Okay, first of all, whoa. It's really fancy pick a mix. Oh my gosh, this smells amazing. I know what I mean the rest of today. Oh, this smells incredible. And this is from my family. So it says, congratulations on 2,000 subscribers. What an achievement. So here is a gram of sugar per, pres per subscriber. When you finally awaken for your diabetic coma, we hope you know we are really proud. Love, Mum and Ben. That's so lovely. And this is the sugar refinery. Uh, dot co dot uk. This is this is perfectly timed, and I'm so. I know what I'm doing this afternoon now. It's about ten minutes later, and this is clearly my lucky day because the Amazon delivery person just dropped this off, and. Like I always say, unless it's a pre-order that I've forgotten about, which I don't think it is, this might be another present. <laughs> so I thought I would open it on camera. Ooh, hardback. Is there a... I don't think I'm going to be able to find a note before I... 
is that <gasps> after the silence by louise o'neill i've really wanted to read this who sent me this who says oh it's from bookie tracy tracy thank you she said sorry to hear that you're having to isolate a little something to cheer you up well this definitely worked thank you so much oh that's a gift note going flying i've been really excited to read this louise o'neill is one of those authors that i will always read whatever they come out with um and i'm really excited for this because i think it's her first thriller yeah nessa crowley's murderer has been protected by science for 10 years until a team of documentary makers decide to find out the truth that's enough i don't want to read any more than that man i might just start reading this today i really really might so yes thank you tracy so much sorry the background noise is so loud thank you so much tracy i really really appreciate it it's the 23rd of june um july even 23rd of july good start Vic. um i haven't filmed for a couple of days because i've just not felt like it um i felt a bit down if i'll be honest and i'm not sure if it's like the anti-climax because i've been working so much and i suddenly had nothing to do and i was just feeling a little bit flat um however i am now going back to school on monday tuesday next week to do summer school as planned um, there was a bit of confusion to start with about when my isolation was due to finish because the ping said seven days, which I thought would take me up and it came through on Monday night. So I was like, okay, that's Monday, next Monday, out the window. Um, and I was only doing Monday and Tuesday of summer school anyway because of childcare. Um, so I thought I wasn't able to do it and then realised that actually my isolation ends on midnight on Sunday, which means I can do it. And then there was a bit of confusion as to whether or not it was even going to happen because the school had to close um for the summer because of how many of my colleagues also got pinged to isolate and then there was more confusion as to whether it was going to happen because one of the feeder schools has had a covid case so some of their kids are isolating it was just a whole thing but as of right now it's happening i have spent the last day and a bit prepping for it so let's hope it does happen um and i'm very happy about being able to go back into school um also the room that i thought was going to be mine has changed um because my boss realized that one of my other colleagues has got two classes where we've got kids who are wheelchair users and so we won't be able to use the stairs so they need to be on the ground floor which is where my room was so obviously i've been swapped and i'm going upstairs which is perfectly fine um and yeah i'm just excited to get in on monday i'm only working like a three-quarter day it's eight till one um both days and then i'm going to be spending the afternoons both days clearing out my new room and like because i'm just i'm not like dressing it until september but i just want to get it cleared like get everybody else's stuff out of my room for a start because we've all been you know moving around school so there's all like different stuff from people's different subjects i just want to get everything cleared out and like get the walls stripped like get all the um displays down and stuff and just have a fresh start fresh canvas to work with when i go back in september so that's good um i've got the world's frizziest hair today and also i'm really aware i've watched my last couple of videos back and i keep touching my hair and it's really annoying so i apologize for that um i'm having it chopped off in less than a month and i'm very very excited in case anyone didn't know the only reason i have such ridiculously long hair is because i'm growing it for the little princess trust it'll be my fifth donation so i will have donated a whole wig of hair by then uh but i hate having long hair it annoys me i don't think it suits me and i just spend the entire time well most of the time with it piled on my head on top of my head uh but i'm now like probably belatedly <laughs> trying to keep take better care of it and not put it up loads um because i've like remembered that actually I'm only temporarily borrowing it. This is going to be somebody else's hair very soon. Anyway, I've now waffled for three and a half minutes. So you're welcome for that. Um, I have five books to talk about. I have finished two books. I'm a probably going to, I'm definitely going to finish another one this evening. But I thought I'd film now whilst I could be bothered. Uh, so I finished two books and then I've been gifted three books. And I apologise in advance because I didn't open them on camera. Um, the first one that we popped through yesterday, I thought was a book that I'd ordered for myself. Which you'll see because that's coming next week. Um which is coming for a buddy read in August. So I thought it was that, ripped it open, and it wasn't. And then the second parcel, I've got no excuse, I just didn't feel like filming. So I'll talk about this in a minute. First of all, the books I finished was The Whisper Man by Alex North. This was gifted to me by the lovely Louisa ages ago. February, it says on here, because I always write, let me cover up her surname. Um, I always write the date on the gift note and then stick it in the front. Um, so sorry it's taking me so long to read this, Louisa. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm not really going to tell you much. 
I'll just, it, on the front it says, if you leave a door half open, soon you'll hear the whisper spoken. And that's all I'm going to tell you, because that's all I really knew about it before I went in. And I feel like it's one that you should just go in blind. It's a thriller. We are following a widowed man and his son. And that is all I will say. It's a debut. I think um, Alex North has recently bought out another book, which I really very much want to pick up. Um, and anything else that he writes. Uh, because this was really clever. I gave it four stars. I did see where it was going really early on but that is partly because i read so many thrillers and partly for another reason that i can't say because it will be a spoiler um but i did spot it really early however i really really enjoyed this it was really clever it hooked me it was really emotional um and i just i thought it was really good so i gave it four stars solid thriller definitely and if you want a thriller that's not gory this would be a good one because i don't think there was any gore there's dark stuff talked about in this but there's no like actual like karen slaughter level gore gore so i really enjoyed that that was a four star and then another four star which is a book that you just watched me open was after the silence by louise o'neill as you know this was gifted by the lovely tracy and again i've put the date in but i read it really quickly um gifted to me by the lovely tracy this month I think I said this in the previous clip, so apologies for repeating myself, but Louisa Neal is an auto-read author for me. I absolutely loved almost all of her books. I think the only one I didn't really enjoy was Almost Love, um, and I think that's just because it probably wasn't a book for me at the time I read it. Um, this is her kind of first foray into thriller, but I would say it's very, very literary, literary thriller rather than, like, thriller thriller rather than, like, this one. This is more of a more of a character study uh so we've got a very wealthy family living on an island off the coast of ireland and 10 years ago they had a massive house party at christmas or new year or something um there was a huge power cut and when the power came back on a young woman was dead and then 10 years later um a documentary crew goes to the island to try and find out what happened to this woman oh is she a woman yeah young young woman um and how everyone is how like everyone's connected to the crime i really like this i can see why it's not very well because i've seen some mixed reviews uh because it is very very character driven i did see the answer again really early on but like i said i read a lot of this kind of book so that's fine um for me it was just missing that little bit of something to give it a five star and i think the problem with louise o'neill for me is i'm always comparing her books to only ever yours which is one of my favorite books of all time and was her debut and it didn't quite reach that level for me but i did very much enjoy it so thank you so much for sending it to me um i'm glad i read it and it was a four star and then like i said i have been spoiled because <laughs> i have been gifted three books so first of all um i was sent by the lovely lovely laura on instagram I was sent Tipping the Velvet by Sarah Waters. This will be my first Sarah Waters book. I've been wanting to read Sarah Waters for ages. And then um, Jessie from Bowties and Books did a whole vlog dedicated to this and raved about it, talked about it loads. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to put that on my wish list. And then I was very kindly sent it. Um, I don't really know much about this, except that it's Victorian lesbians. That's kind of all I know. And again, I don't really want to know loads more. Um, it is quite, it's a lot bigger than I was expecting how many pages are you it's 477 pages and like the text is small so i'm a little bit scared now it's here however i love this edition it's the 25th anniversary edition um and i'm gonna give it a try so yes i need to stick that amazon voucher no amazon voucher amazon note in but thank you laura i was very very excited to open this and thank you so much and then my lovely friend leanne from mystery diversions is very naughty because she sent me two books <laughs> she sent me this one the appeal by janice hallett because she's currently reading it and she's obsessed and she wants me to be obsessed too so i was excited about that and it says one murder 15 suspects can you uncover the truth that's what i really want to know about it i'm not going to read the back i'm just going to read it although again it's a biffer i mean it's over it's nearly 500 pages but i think there's mi yeah there's mixed media and stuff in it which will be interesting and i also just saw um chloe from chloe Do reads books by this on a whim um during her london vlog and then really i think she read the first like 60 pages on the train home really enjoyed it so i'm intrigued by that one and then a book that was on my wish list was witch light by susan fletcher and i can't remember who i saw talking about this it might have been leanne it might also have been jean um but i can't remember 
1692, Korag, a wild girl living in the mountains of Scotland, has been imprisoned as a witch. Terrified in a cold, filthy cell, she waits her fate of death by burning, until she is visited by Charles Leslie, an Irishman hungry to question her. For Korag knows more than she seems, she was witness to the bloody and brutal massacre of Glencoe. I mean, I don't need to read any more than that. I'm excited for this one. This sounds really good. So yes, I have read some stuff and been sent some stuff. And thank you very much. It's the 24th of July and I'm just about to jump onto Leanne's reading sprints for her patrons this morning because it's Saturday morning. First of all, the weather broke last night. I don't think I've ever been so happy to hear rain, thunder and lightning. And today it's like 23 degrees, so much cooler. And it's raining still and I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm literally like, I'm sat on my bed, which is where I always sit um, for live shows. And I've just, I'm so happy that the weather is broken. I don't care well on the heat. Um, but yeah, before I jump onto her sprints, I just wanted to quickly say I finished uh, The Number Two Feline Detective Agency by Mandy Morton last night. This is very kindly gifted to me by Kat from Bruising Reviews for Christmas. Uh, this is all my last Christmas books left to read. I've got this one, I've just finished. And then my current read was also a Christmas book. And then I'm done. Um, yeah, so I read, I accidentally read the eighth and currently last book in the series, which is The Ice Maid's Tale last year, which Charlotte sent me as a joke because it's kind of a Handmaid's Tale spoof. Um, so I, went, I really enjoyed that and we decided to go back and pick up the first book. Um, this one I did enjoy. I'm definitely going to carry on and read the rest of the series. Um, it's basically a setup. So we're set, we're in a world where everyone is cats. There are no humans. Everyone's cats. And we're following two cats who set up a feline detective agency. And in this book, they are investigating grave robbing. Grave robbing. So these books I really like because they're kind of cosy mysteries, but then there's really dark bits. Like there's some really dark bits in this. This is definitely for adults. Um, and I did enjoy it. Giving it three stars only because First of all, I can see, having read the eighth book, how much the writer's style has developed and it definitely gets better. This was not as good as the eighth one, but that's to be expected. Um, but also this one did have some racial stereotyping in it, which did make me a bit uncomfortable. It was written like 10 years ago, I think. Um, and when were you published? 2014. So it was written a while ago, but it was still a little bit borderline and that did make me a bit uncomfortable. Um, but I did enjoy the writing. There's some amazing descriptions of food. If you like descriptions of food in books, I'd really recommend this. And this is basically Agatha Christie with cats. So yeah, gave it three stars, very much enjoyed it and want to carry on with the series. So thank you cat for sending this to me. It was a good choice. It's the 26th of July and I have just finished Perfect Death by Helen Fields. Um, this is very kindly gifted to me by the lovely Jo months ago. Um, and it's part of the, um, D.I. Kalanick series this is the third in, in that series um so the series itself is set in edinburgh we're following di kalanak and his squad um is a police procedural each one has a different serial killer this one has a serial killer who is killing people by drugging them really slowly so they don't even notice what's happening um until everything goes wrong and I just thought it was really clever. This is a really dark series, really dark gritty, loads of content warnings for it, so please check it before you pick it up. Um, but it's been a solid four stars. I gave the first two four stars, I gave this one four stars. They're just the kind of um, kind of easy to read, quick reads I really enjoy. And I had a lovely time. Yeah, this definitely lived up to the other two that I've read. I think there's six or seven in the series, so I'm about halfway through, and I definitely wanna keep going. So thank you, Joe, for sending this to me. It was a lovely little break for my brain. It's the 28th of July and I am finally on my summer holidays. Very happy about it. I was obviously really sad not to, when I thought I wasn't going back to school before the end of term. And then I really enjoyed teaching the summer school. I did two days, met some of our new year sevens and just had a lovely time with them. Um, I managed to clear out my new room and get that ready for me to like reassemble in September because I basically just cleared everything out that I didn't want. And then I'll spend like the first couple of days uh, before the kids come back in September putting stuff back in. Like I need to buy plants, I need a clock, um, I need to do some displays and all that kind of stuff. But like I've like stripped it down so it's ready to walk back into in September, which I'm very excited about. But today is the first day of my summer holiday and I actually have Charlie the rest of this week. Gary's gone back to work. And I've got Charlie today, tomorrow and Friday and then we've got him on the weekend. Um, but today his granddad and his uncle have taken him off to the cinema to see Black Widow. Um, so I've kind of got most of the day to myself. Um, so yeah, I'm on my summer holidays, but I do have 
a book to talk about. I'm not just here to waffle about the fact that I'm on some holidays for the next five weeks. And I'm very, very excited about it. It's a weird feeling because like today I have to go and do the food job, but I don't have anything else to do after that, which after 18 months of like constantly having loads to do and pressure and pressure and pressure, having nothing, it's kind of a weird feeling although don't get me wrong I'm sure I'm sure I get used to it but anyway last night I came home to this gorgeous proof from book break um which is the Christie affair by Nina de Gramont Gramont I need to work out how to say that I mean this is really cool because it looks like the front page of a newspaper where is Mrs Christie but look at the back and the spine like I mean for a proof they really go all out um if you saw my if you follow my bookstagram you'll have seen that i was part of the um book trailer for this book and i'm really excited about it um so now really like thrilled to have an actual copy in my hands and i did actually message emma um from drinking by my shelf because she's um part of the team that runs book break and i was like do i have to wait because this doesn't come out until january and i was like do i have to wait until december to read this or can i read it now she's like no read it whenever you like and you know that's fine because usually I leave review copies until the month before, but I don't think I'm going to be able to wait to read this one. Let me just read you a little, the back, um, so you know what I'm whiffling on about. As usual, I've got way too overexcited and not actually told you about the book. Excellent job, Victoria. So it says, 1926, Agatha Christie disappeared for 11 days. That's true. Aside from, a fa the, aside from the famous author herself, only I know the truth of her disappearance. I'm no Hercule Poirot. What well, words? I'm a husband's mistress. The Christie Affair coming January 2022. I mean, it's just so exciting. Um, so yeah, this proof has arrived. I might read it. I might try and squeeze it in this month, although I probably won't manage it. Although actually, it's not as big as it looks. It's less than 400 pages, 360 pages. So maybe, but mostly, I'm just obsessed with how pretty it is. And it's the 31st of July and I'm here to wrap up this month's reading vlog. So I usually try and do my wrap up in my filming space, like this like final clip, but it's Saturday, the boys are at home. You can probably hear the washing machine in the background. There's cats running around everywhere. You can probably hear Charlie outside with a scooter. So I'm filming up here where it's a tiny bit quieter, but we're just gonna have to deal with the reality of my life today. Um, before I wrap up July, I have got four other books to talk to you about. Three that I finished and one that I have bought myself. So going in the order that I finished them, first of all was Wonderland by Juno Dawson. Um, Charlotte gave this to me when she unhauled it a few months ago and I've had it for quite a while. Sat on my shelves, it was my first Juno Dawson and it's basically a, I would say new adult, like top end of YA, but probably new adult, um, retelling of Alice in Wonderland. And in this retelling, Alice is a transgender girl, her friend Bunny goes missing and she, she seems to be the only one who was interested in finding her. And in the pursuit of Bunny, she uh, falls into Wonderland, I guess. And that is all I'm really gonna say about it. This is my first Juno Dawson. It definitely won't be the last. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I personally have never been a fan of Alice in Wonderland. Um, so I did struggle a little bit at the beginning and also slightly because um, Alice's like motivation for chasing after Bunny, I thought was a bit flimsy. I didn't really understand why she was doing it. It does become apparent later on in the book, but at first I was a bit like, why do I care? However, I did get really attached to Alice. I loved um, the way that mental health is looked at. There are a lot of trigger warnings for this book. And what I really love is that there is a warning at the front from Juno Dawson, which says, Wonderland is a work of fiction, but deals with many real life issues, including, including mental health, self-harm, sexual assault, and drug use. Support on these topics can be found via the organizations listed at the back of the book, which I thought was fantastic. I think the other content one I'd give for this is suicide and discussions of suicide because it does come up quite a bit. But I thought this was really fun. Um, it looks a lot at gender, identity, sex, drugs, rock and roll, and obviously, as I've already said, mental health and suicide. So yeah, I gave this four stars. It definitely will not be my last Juno Dawson. I really enjoyed that. And then I had two five star reads to finish off the month, which was just the best thing. So as you saw earlier in the month, um, the lovely Leanne sent me the appeal by um, Janice Hallett and I was just so intrigued because I think it came out this month or last month um, and I'd never heard of it. Then I saw Chloe at Chloe Reads Books buy it at random and really enjoy it and then obviously Leanne was really loving it so she sent me a copy and then since then I've seen it like all over Bookstagram. So basically I was just like I finished my TBR for the month because I have completed all the books that Charlotte sent me. Um, so I'm just going to pick this up and I thought oh because I had like three or four days left of the month I was like that will take me the rest of the month because it's nearly 500 pages. 
No, read this in less than 24 hours, absolutely obsessed with it. So I'm really not going to tell you very much other than what it says on the front, which is one murder, 15 suspects. Can you uncover the truth? And it's a mystery in a very kind of Agatha Christie type vibe. Um, I gave it five stars. I've never read anything like it and I would really highly recommend it. And that's really all I'm going to say. I thought it was fantastic. I can't wait to see what she brings out next. I do think, and Chloe said this in her vlog and I agree, I think this cover needs redoing. I think this makes it look historical fiction. It's not. Um, the American or the hardback cover is just plain with the, with a ribbon, which makes more sense because of what you're reading in the book. And yeah, I don't want to give any more information than that, but just read this. It's really good. Pick it up. It's not gory. It's not violent. It's just really fascinating. And the way it's done is just so clever. So there was that one. And then finally, Aoife uh, from Pretty Purple Polka Dots. That my brain just paused them for a second. Um, had our very first buddy read this month, which was My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Um, this was gifted to me by the lovely Chloe quite a while ago. This was a book that took the book world by storm last year, and I can absolutely see why. So we are following Vanessa, who, when she's 15, 14 or 15, falls in love with her English teacher. And at the time, she sees it as a loving, romantic, consensual relationship. Her teacher is in, her, in his 40s. And then we jump forward 10 years, I think it's about 10 years later, and there are other girls coming forward accusing that teacher of sexual assault and rape. And Vanessa is forced to reevaluate what happened to her and decide what she wants to do, if anything. And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this book. I gave it five stars. It's incredibly raw. Um, that's really the only word I can think of to kind of sum it up. It's very, very raw. It's very brutal. It's very explicit. Don't pick this up um, without checking content warnings first. But I just thought it was incredible. And although I read this in 50 page sections because of my Anifa's um, body read, I literally, I could have read this all in one go, I think, and I felt like I wasn't breathing it as I was reading. It was fantastically done and I would highly recommend it, but please, like I said, check the content, content warnings first. And then I have bought myself one book, which I'm adding into my August TBR. And if you've not seen that video already, I will link it in the description, which is The Rose and the Dagger by, I don't, I've never <laughs> found out how to say this correctly, I need to, Rene Adia. I think um, I'm going to be body reading this with Jean from Jean's Bookish Thoughts and possibly Leanne from Literary Diversions next month. Um, this is the second book. What was the first book? Oh my goodness. Why am I so bad at being a booktuber? I read the first book, which is um, A Thousand One Nights retelling last year. I think it, or it might have been 2019 actually. Um, and this is the follow up book. So I can't really say much about it. But in the first book, uh, we follow a girl who is sent to be the wife of, um, of the local king and he uh, marries a different girl every day and then every every night and then every morning he has her executed and she is going in deliberately because one of his previously executed brides has been her best friend so she's on a revenge mission um, and it's about what happens and this is the second book I think it's a duology um, so I really excited to get back into this I have been avoiding it because I enjoyed the first one so much like the first one completely caught me off guard and I've been a little bit scared to pick up the sequel in case it's not as good. But I'm going to be reading this, um, like I said, in August with Jean. And the answer, that's a book that would come in. And finally, let's do stats for July. So, as usual, I've got my reading journal. So I read 15 books, um, which was 5,687 pages or 184 pages a day. And in um, apart from January and February, when I wasn't physically teaching in person, it's my best reading month in terms of number of books and number of pages. My average star rating was 4.06, so it was a really great quality month as well. Um, my favourite book of the month, I've got my book stack here, so I'm just going to take it apart slightly. My favourite book of the month has got to be The Appeal, just because I never read anything like it. I did have some fantastic books reads this month. Um, I also really enjoyed, uh, what else did I really enjoy? A Beginner's Guide to Being Mental. I did think for quite a while that was going to be my favourite book in the month. Um, Circus of Wonders, obviously the second Heartstopper volume. Um, I also really enjoyed, so I'm getting text messages coming through as I'm filming. Also really enjoyed Wonderland and as I said, really loved My Dark Vanessa, but this is definitely my book of the month. Um, and disappointingly, my most disappointing read for the month is going to have to be the Final Girl support group. It just didn't feel like a Grady Hendrix and the more I thought about it the more disappointed I've been by it so unfortunately that was my least favourite read of the month but yeah let me see if I can hold up 
all the books. So um, August, I'm very excited for. I've got lots of big plans, which you guys will see in my August content. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to hold this up. Hang on. Eeh, using my chin. Okay, so these plus the two audiobooks. <laughs> Other books I read, oh my God, in July. All of those. Ooh, okay, if you got this far, please leave me. It's, it's a big enough file I can rest my arm on it. I don't know if my reading's been on fire this month. If you got this far, please leave me. The book stack I'm ready to use, the only one it could be. Um, please subscribe if you would like more of this chaos. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.